Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I am Trish and today I'm gonna be kicking off the pumpkin season with a pumpkin cacao marbled sheet pan cake. Yeah, that is a mouthful, but it is so delicious and I am so excited to share this recipe with you. If this is your first time viewer, thank you so much for joining. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming again. Please remember to like the video guys, share and give some love to the channel. All right, so without much ado, or further ado let's get right into the video okay guys so in the meantime my oven is being preheated at 350 degrees all right I'm starting with a um, sh um, utility pan here and the first thing I'm gonna do is add my oil and this is about a quarter cup of EVOO and then I'm adding a how much is this? I want to say it's about a quarter cup of almond homemade milk. You can use um, whole full fat cow's milk if that's what your um, if that's what you have. That's what I would have used, but I have none of that today, so I'm just using the almond milk. Um, I just added two large whipped eggs. Whisk that. And this is one of those cakes, guys, where you can just dump everything in. Okay, no specifications or anything like that. All right, I'm gonna mix that in really well. And then I'm gonna put my sugar in. And right, this is a cup and a half of coconut sugar. Whisk that in. You can use your, your stand mixer as well if you want. So I'm going to add, this is about three tablespoons of freshly grated ginger. All right. And we're just going to whisk that in. Also going to add to that um, a teaspoon of five spice no if you don't have spice five spice no if you don't have five spice what you're gonna need is a half a teaspoon of cinnamon a half a teaspoon of um, um, what's it called ginger and a half a teaspoon of did I say half a teaspoon no let me correct myself. You're going to need a quarter teaspoon of um, um, powdered ginger if you don't um, have fresh ginger, a quarter teaspoon of um, clove, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of um, and a quarter teaspoon of star anise grounded star anise now you don't have to add all of those these are just the ingredients that's in um, the five spice all you actually need is pumpkin spice a nice heaping teaspoon of pumpkin spice all right so <clears throat> excuse me you can use that or you can use a five spice all right but i just wanted to name out all the ingredients that's in the five spice so if you're using five spice you're gonna add a heaping teaspoon of the five spice you can pretty much play around with this however you like okay the next thing we're gonna do is add our pumpkin puree so I have in here two cups of pumpkin puree and this is from the can that I'm using here I don't remember what brand of pumpkin puree this is, but I would think any any brand would be okay. The two cups of pureed pumpkin. I'm just gonna mix that to make sure it's nicely combined, and then I'm gonna need two cups of flour. And, 
I'm using some whole wheat flour today. Usually I'd use um, freshly ground spelt, but I don't have the time for that today. So I'm using some whole wheat, some white whole wheat flour. All right, and to that I'm gonna add David, can you open this for me, honey? Open the baking powder for me. To that, I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. So here's one teaspoon. And then I'll just eyeball it. that in slowly and I know the batter is gonna be rather thick but that's the way it's supposed to be this is not a runny butter this is a very thick one actually don't want to over mix, mix this um, flour because we don't want it to be too doughy and that's why I'm using a whisk to kind of keep some air in it and I'm gonna add another cup of my white whole wheat flour. You can also use gluten-free flour. I believe the same amount, two cups. And to this one, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of baking soda. Of course, I will have all the ingredients listed for you in the description box. Trying to do everything to keep air in this flour because, as you know, whole wheat flour has a tendency to be very dense. You can also use cake flour if you want. That's what you're into. I'm going to go ahead and just stir slowly. nicely combined and like I said as you can see it's a very thick butter but it's okay everything's gonna be just fine now I have my sheet pan over here that I'm gonna everything out in but I'm gonna go ahead and take out about I'd say one third cup of this mixture David get me the milk and this should be about one third I think one third cup of the mixture and to that I'm gonna add two tablespoons of cacao all right One, two, and then I'm going to add to that four teaspoons of homemade almond milk, but any milk will do. Actually, I usually make this with um, full fat cow's milk. One, two. Three, four. And I'm just gonna mix that until it's all combined. Should have gotten a bigger container, but oh well. Too late now. And that's because the cacao is so light, you know, it goes all over. All right, so I'm just mixing that. And this is what we're gonna use to marble our, um, our batter, right? See, and that's it. I'm gonna 
scrape all my butter out into my sheet pan. Like I said before, you can use whatever pan you like. A bunt tin makes this very pretty too. So I'm just going to go ahead and gently spread this out. Yeah, you're going to have to spread it out, especially because of the sheet pan situation. Trying to do that. And I greased the sides of my sheet pan and then I lined the bottom with parchment paper, as you can probably see. Let's try to get it as smooth as possible. I'm going to bang it here. All right. I hope that's not too much for you guys. All right, so then I'm going to I'm going to use a tablespoon and make um a little drops. Should be able to make about six of these. Just about. Alright. And then I'm going to use a skewer. You can use whatever you want, actually. I try to flatten it again. I hope the banging isn't too much. Bang it out. And then I'm just going to play in it, pretty much. And make little, little swirls, just like that. Remember how to do this, David? Yeah. All right. <laughs> You can do that. Well, I, the David's gonna do little swirls. And that's it. It looks pretty good. And that's pretty much it. All the swirls. You know, if you're um, good at making swirls, that's even better. But hmm, this is good enough. bang it again and this is gonna go in our oven sorry for the banging guys but you gotta do this especially when the cake is this dense um, I'm gonna put it in the oven to bake for an hour and a half at 350 okay guys so our sheet pan cake is all done and actually this took an hour to bake instead of an hour and a half and i'm gonna leave it on this um rack to cool for about five minutes before i turn it out onto the um the rack itself okay guys so it's been about five minutes and i'm just gonna loosen the edges of this cake it should be nice and close, but just making sure. Okay, sounds like it's nice and loose. And then it was... Okay. to cool completely what i like to do is place another rack on the bottom like so and then just flip it so i'm gonna allow it to cool what i like to do is like cut it in squares after it's done but i'm gonna allow it to cool a little bit more and then i'll come back and show you how pretty it looks Okay guys, so it's been about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start slicing this up. 
into squares. And doing this ahead of time just helps with portion control, you know? It's still a little warm, but cool enough. Okay, guys, so here's the finished product. I like to store it on my... Um, my cake stand and line it with um, paper towel so that when it's covered you know the moisture is continually absorbed and this is the finish product pumpkin cacao sheet pan swirl cake and these are pieces of ginger you see it sticking out so until the next video guys Please remember to like and share and if you haven't hit the subscription um, bell please remember to do so so you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out god bless and thanks for watching again bye